Hi guys, welcome you all to this uh, complete prosthodontics uh, rapid revision class and uh, today's video is going to be part of this uh, comprehensive course of video lectures which I have designed. I'll take just two minutes of your time to explain it to you that what is it because you know along with my MDS preparation I have put a lot of energy, lot of time and uh, you know genuine effort to make you all understand prosthodontics easier, better and uh, you know uh, I, I wish that you all fall in love with this subject with me. So just give me two minutes of your time and I'll walk you through that how this course will go and what is it about. Okay. So uh, why uh, one should go for this course is because, uh, you know, NEAT MDS is not just about theory. Okay. They are also asking questions which are based on your understanding. Okay. I, I hope that, uh, you know, you all will agree on this point. Okay. And that's why, you know, I have not just shared the topics which are there in your dental pulse or which are asked from mcq point of view or which is just theory based but i've tried to explain it to you with different models in uh, in the case of cpd which is you know most difficult for you all to understand at ug level because you don't do it then the other part is implantology which is also something new at ug level but still questions are asked in need okay so i have tried to include uh, these two topics very comprehensively fpd and cd as well but these two topics especially have taken a lot of time and tried to make it easier okay so it will be a video lectures okay on uh, cd rpd fpd implantology and you don't need to worry about the references because all the standard references i have you know taken the information from apart from this i have also you know it is a mixture of my understanding expertise and my passion for the subject is also there in these videos okay and every topic i have tried to go it into in depth and try to make you understand although the name is just crash course but i have tried to give you more than just a crash course or you know just reading the stuff because i genuinely you know like teaching and i like prosto and i like teaching prosto right and there is a model discussion as i said in rpd as well as you know uh implantology is also i have included you know a quick 30 minute lecture is there 30 to 40 minute lecture is there but it includes everything which is to be uh you know uh, you should know as at UG level is there okay and CD and FPD as well so now I will not take much of your time you can proceed to your demo lecture and I will see you all on the other side of it I hope you all can join me into it and I'll be waiting for your feedback suggestions and if you still have any queries all the details are in the description box below you can reach out to me directly and ask your queries or you can enroll for this course the link is in the description box and there is a a doubt solving whatsapp group as well okay where you can put your mcq doubts or your theoretical doubts and i'll be solving it but this will be uh, only for the subject of prosthodontics okay so guys so far in the components of rpd we studied about the major connector right we studied about minor connector we saw few important uh, facts regarding the rests and rest seat okay and uh, after that now we'll be discussing direct retainers and indirect retainers which is again a very very important topic from uh, you know uh, not only neat mds point of view but also to understand this removable partial denture better this is a very important and interesting okay so stay tuned with me and uh, take a break wherever you feel very tired but do not lose your focus okay so what is the function of direct retainer as the name suggests it is a retainer so its function is to 
provide the retention for the prosthesis okay so now there is a classification uh, for our direct retainers okay so it is classified into two okay one is the intracoronal retainer other are the extracoronal retainer so we know that by coronal we mean crown right so one is something which is present outside the crown one which is present inside the crown okay so one is intra and the other is extra coronal right so the intra coronal uh, are mostly the attachments which are given inside the tooth and extra coronal are retentive clasp assemblies okay the clasp which we uh, give on the outer surface of a tooth like this you can see it here so this is an extra coronal type of direct retainer in here okay so in intra coronal we have precision and semi precision attachments okay so precision attachments they are prefabricated and that's why they are very precise right then semi precision are the plastic attachments and we cast it later on so that's why they are semi precision attachments okay when it comes to retentive clasp assemblies we have supra bulge and infra bulge clasp okay so uh, there is a term which is supra bulge and infra bulge so how do we uh, you know classify actually whether something is supra bulge or infra bulge so see this is the height of contour so anything which is above the height of contour is supra bulge and anything below the height of contour is infra bulge okay so the supra bulge is the acres clasp the more simpler name is your c clasp okay that is the acres clasp which is supra bulge clasp and in infra bulge you have bar or roche type of clasp okay which is like this approaching the like if this is your tooth surface then this is something like this which is appro approaching from the gingiva okay so uh, now yeah this is what i was talking about the clasp assemblies okay the supra bulge and the infra bulge infra bulge is below the height of contour and supra bulge is that the retentive component will pass somewhere here so it will be above the height of contour okay so see a uh, bar or a roche clasp will look something like this as you can see it here okay it will look something like this now what are the parts of clasp assembly so see this clasp is not a single clasp but it is an assembly okay so it includes rest it includes retentive arm it includes reciprocal arm and minor connector okay so this is the clasp assembly of this four components okay so uh, i cannot show you this on yeah actually i can okay so for uh, let's say that for this last molar okay if you will see it has a rest it has a occlusal rest on it okay then this arm that is the retentive arm okay and inside is the reciprocal arm okay and a minor connector which is joining from here okay so this is a clasp assembly which includes rest then the retentive arm reciprocal arm and minor connector so what is a retentive arm see retentive arm no uh, it is a property of retentive arm that the terminal one third should be flexible okay so if you have a tooth like this okay and uh, let's say that it is approaching this is your clasp arm hmm? let's say this is your clasp arm yeah so the terminal one third that is this portion terminal one third it has to be flexible this portion of your uh, clasp or the retentive arm should be flexible okay and the this proximal area it has to be rigid okay this has to be rigid and the terminal one third should be flexible now it contacts the tooth surface at a pical one third okay and it should be passive at rest like when the prosthesis is resting in patient's mouth it should not exert any pressure it should be passive at rest and it should become active during the action so as the patient starts chewing or swallowing the clasp should contact the tooth tightly okay so that when the patient is chewing or swallowing your prosthesis will stay in place 
सो इफ द रिटेंटिव आर्म इज नॉट पैसिव ओके इफ द रिटेंटिव आर्म इज नॉट पैसिव देन वॉट विल हैपन ऑर्थोडोंटिक टूथ माइग्रेशन विल अकर ओके इफ दिस क्लास इज कॉन्स्टेंटली क्रिएटिंग प्रेशर ऑन दिस प्री मोलार देन दिस प्री मोलार विल बी कंपेरडोंटली वीक इवेंचुअली एंड देन और एल्स यू नो द ऑर्थोडोंटिक माइग्रेशन ऑफ दिस टूथ कैन अकर इन सर्टेन केसेस ओके Now we'll talk about the reciprocal arm. It is above the height of contour. Okay, as you can see here. Okay, this is our reciprocal arm in here. So that is above the height of contour, and it contact the surface at the junction of middle as well as the apical third. Okay. Now there is a concept of encirclement. Okay, what do we mean by encirclement? Encirclement is 180 degree of abutment tooth surface. should be covered okay so see if you will consider this last molar okay so it is one more than 180 degree of encirclement is there here is your reciprocal arm here is your minor connector proximal plate and here is your retentive here is your retentive arm okay so that is how it has encircled the tooth more than 180 degrees now the clasp mechanism which is based on the prothero's cone theory okay so molar and premolar uh, prothero was a scientist and he said that molars and premolars are like a cone okay and you can divide it into two parts based dividing it by a height of contour okay so clasp should always engage below the cone okay so if this is a molar and if we are dividing into two parts based upon the height of contour and if your clasp is from here okay then it should engage below the cone okay so it should engage like this it should not be the otherwise okay like your clasp it should not be the otherwise like your clasp should not be starting from here and going till here okay this is incorrect this is incorrect and this is correct like it should be engaging apically hmm? now go uh, moving forward what are the types of supra bulge clasp okay supra bulge clasp means whatever which is above the height of contour okay so what are the components which are above the height of contour okay so we have simple circlet clasp it is same as ortho ka c class which we designed in our final years okay and then it engage the meso buccal undercut this you need to remember it engages the meso buccal undercut and the clasp of choice for class 3 situation where it is tooth bounded right where it is tooth bounded like teeth are present on both the side and the clasp arm projects away from the edentulous ridge so here i don't have actually a c class pin here but yeah you can take example of this premolar okay so it is engaging the meso buccal undercut and it is going away from the edentulous side okay in here so that is a typical example of your acres class or c class okay so in cross section uh if the cross section is round okay then it is more flexible which is preferred for class 1 and class 2 and if it is half round in cross cross section then it is less flexible which is preferred for class 3 situations okay class 3 situations mein kya hota hai ki usually you have support from teeth on both the sides okay so here you require less support and that's why it is less flexible compared to class 1 and 2 okay then the second uh, kind of clasp assembly is the reverse circlet clasp which is opposite to circlet as the name suggest okay and it engages the disto buccal undercut it is to be used on canine and premolars and clasp arm projects towards the edentulous area okay whereas it was opposite in our uh, circlet clasp that it was going away from the edentulous ridge whereas reverse circlet will go towards the ridge okay and the problem with reverse circlet is poor aesthetics so if the disto buccal undercut <coughs> is present then it is uh, ideal to give a bar type of clasp okay but if uh it is not used then we go for reverse circlet clasp okay so see uh, like in this case where 
like in this case where we have given a bar clasp okay similarly if there is a severe soft tissue undercut in here okay like this tissue is very much bulgy and i cannot go till this depth in soft tissue then what i'll do i'll give a reverse circlet clasp okay a clasp like this which will be towards the edentulous side and it will be engaging the distobuccal undercut okay i hope it is very clear to you guys okay if you have any doubts any queries you are free to ask me on our whatsapp group okay now the third kind of direct retainer is the multiple circlet clasp it is used for periodontally compromised abutment and it is joined at the reciprocal arm so multiple circlet clasp mein kya hota hai ki ye jo this uh, reciprocal arm are joined like similarly i can give it let's say that we have two premolars in here okay if we have two premolars connected by the reciprocal arm then it will become multi multiple circlet clasp okay then the another is a embrasure clasp which is important one it is primarily included to be used on that side of the arch where there is no edentulous space okay so basically in class 2 situations okay if you have a situation like this okay where you have teeth present on one side and here you have multiple missing teeth in here okay so in this situation what you will do these are the missing teeth so embrasure clasp comes on the opposite side here okay here you will give the embrasure clasp where no edentulous space is present and it is typically given in class 2 situations and it is a uh, two circlet clasp which are joined at body okay so this is somewhat it looks like okay this these are the c clasps okay and it is joined by body so this is how the embrasure clasp looks like then the uh, fifth direct retainer is a ring clasp and it is indicated for tilted or tipped molar okay it is your direct mcq in here that is it is indicated for tipped molars and for mandibular second molar as well okay and uh, it is given only when the undercut is present on the mesiolingual side okay and it is only given when the adequate vestibular depth is present so ring clasp is somewhat uh, you know like a ring like a circle and uh, there are very limited indications for it this clasp you you do not give it regularly okay it is given for the mandibular second molar and uh, when the undercut is on the mesio lingual side so your molar is tipped lingually so in such case you will go for a ring clasp then something called as fish hook or hairpin clasp it is very rarely used okay it is very rarely used and asked also so there are two horizontal arms reciprocal arm contact with tooth surface first and then the rest of it the reciprocal arm act as a minor connector and the problem with this clasp is that it has a very limited flexibility okay then something called as onlay clasp it is not indicated and not much used okay then the wrought wire circumferential clasp or combination clasp which is again a very important to understand okay so it is given in case of high survey line if you remember our discussion of survey lines okay so survey lines are classified into high medium low and diagonal okay i hope you all remember it there was something called as near zone something called as far zone okay so at that time also i mentioned that the wrought wire clasp or a combination clasp is given where your survey line is higher okay and where the undercut is more than 0.015 inch okay so in that that situation we give wrought wire because it is quite flexible when the undercut is deep it is uh, we need a more flexible material and that's where we use a wrought wire clasp okay so uh, what is the advantage of using a wrought wire is that it increases the flexibility because of undercut is more in that okay if the undercut is more then we'll use wrought wire because it has increased flexibility right 
Now coming to a bar clasp or Roche clasp or infra bulge clasp. Again, it is very important. Okay, so what happens in here is that it has a push type of retention, guys. It is also a very important MCQ and it was asked in NEAT 2021 if I'm not wrong. Okay, so it is a push type of retention and it approaches the 90 degree, but it slightly curves okay so not exactly 90 degree and opposite to this the pull type of retention is there in supra bulge clasp or c clasp okay so why a push type is that like it is approaching from the gingiva right so uh, to get the retention it it the its mechanism is like that that you have to push it to remove the uh, clasp assembly from the tooth okay whereas in the c clasp you need to pull it now coming to the rpi concept again a very important concept for you all okay so what is rpi okay so as the name suggests r stands for rest p for proximal plate and i for i bar okay so it is RPI that is mesial rest okay RPI mein hamesha yaad rakhna hai rest is on the mesial side okay so we have a mesial rest proximal plate and I bar okay so a, a schematic representation will be something like this so when the buccal undercut is not present then only we use the proximal or the lingual undercut okay first we aim for a buccal undercut either a meso buccal or disto buccal but still if it is not available then in such cases we use the proximal undercut or lingual undercut right now see here is a very nice compilation of you know what clasp you will give where okay so it is uh ideal it is which clasp where So see simple circlet clasp you can give when you have a meso buccal undercut, reverse circlet you give when you have a disto buccal undercut, embrasure clasp when meso buccal of one tooth and disto buccal of other tooth and it is always given in class two situations okay. Then ring clasp it is given when the when you have a meso lingual undercut and meso buccal undercut in maxillary molars and ring clasp is most common on second molars in mandible right i hope that you all are with me and understanding what i am trying to deliver it to you guys okay and still if you don't understand i have told you that what are the important points which you need to remember from neat mds point of view okay and then something called as fish hook clasp which engages the 